everybody who has a mother, happy <laughs> Mother's Day. Good. Wonderful. And to all mothers as well. So welcome to All Angels Episcopal Church, whether you are at home or sitting outside in your car or walking around our property or whether you're one of our team inside of the church, welcome. And welcome to you who are watching in uh, all different parts of the world, uh, those that are on our Zoom broadcast and those who are watching us on YouTube. Welcome and happy Sunday morning to you all. If uh, you are online, you can find our service bulletin, just like this, uh, and it is on our website. So go to our website, click on the file, and you will follow along. If you have your Book of Common Prayer, we will uh, occasionally read out where the numbers are in the Book of Common Prayer. And if you are parked out in front of the church or along the side, uh, our ushers outside have bulletins for you. So uh, thank you to our parking lot attendants and ushers for handing all of that out. So I am glad that you're here. Our service begins on page two in your bulletin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is the great. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5. It can be found in your bulletin and in your prayer books on page 622. Let us read it responsively by half verse. Please respond after the asterisk. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth.
A reading from Peter's first letter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like a newborn baby, desire the pure milk of the word. Nourished by it, you will grow into salvation, since you have tasted that the Lord is good. Now you are coming to him as a living stone. Even though this stone was rejected by humans, from God's perspective, it is chosen, valuable. You yourselves are being built like living stones into a spiritual temple. You are being made into a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Thus it is written in the scripture, look, I am laying a cornerstone in Zion, chosen, valuable. The person who believes in him will never be shamed. So God honors you who believed. For those who refuse to believe though, the stone the builders tossed aside has become the capstone. This is a stone that makes people stumble and a rock that makes them fall. Because they refuse to believe in the word, they stumble. Indeed, this is the end to which they were appointed. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who are God's own possession. You have become this people so that you may speak of the wonderful acts of the one who called you out of darkness into his amazing light. Once you weren't a people, but now you're God's people. Once you hadn't received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from John. The crowd asked Jesus, what must we do in order to accomplish what God requires? Jesus replied, this is what God requires, that you believe in him whom God sent. They asked, what miraculous sign will you do that we can see and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, just as it was written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus told them, I assure you, it wasn't Moses who gave the bread from heaven to you, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They replied, Sir, give, this, give us this bread all the time. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I told you that you have seen me and still don't believe. Everyone whom the Father gives me will come to me, and I won't send anyone away who comes to me. I have come down from the heaven, do not I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the one who sent me, that I won't lose anything he has given me, but I will raise it up on the last day. This is my Father's will, that all who see the Son and believe in him will have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to Lord you, Christ. Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable to you. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So for those of you who uh, like to watch multiple services on a Sunday, uh, you will notice something a little different about our service than from others. The difference is that we read a different gospel lesson this Sunday morning. And we're doing morning prayer, and morning prayer is different than when we celebrate the Holy Eucharist or Holy Communion. Uh, when we do that, we have a set number of things that we have to do. In fact, in order to qualify for having Holy Communion, uh, we have to have the gospel read, and the gospel must be proclaimed by a deacon. And if you don't have a deacon, it must be proclaimed by a bishop. 
and if you don't have a bishop, then it must be proclaimed you know, by a priest. Uh, the priests are the third in order uh, for having Holy Communion, but that's okay, that's all right. Uh, that's number one, is that uh, the gospel has to be proclaimed. And you'll notice that it begins the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, right? It has a unique beginning. You must have uh, the creed and you must say the Lord's Prayer. Those are the requirements for Holy Communion. Now, morning prayer, which is what we're doing today, gives us a lot more freedom. And so uh, we have lay people who read the lessons, including the lesson from John. It's a, it's a fun way of, of doing that. The other latitude that it allows me is that I can change something, and I decided to change something today. Uh, I think that the message for today about I am the bread of life is something that God was leading me to for me to tell you about today. And so I will be talking about uh, I am the bread of life. And then later, as you might expect from this, we will sing the hymn, I am the bread of life. And so it should all connect in together. Uh, so what I want to talk about with the bread of life, it comes from chapter 6 in John's Gospel. If you read only one chapter of any of the Gospels, please make it chapter 6 of John's Gospel. Chapter 6 is full of amazing things that he did. So it begins with the feeding of the 5,000. He goes out, he preaches to them, there is no food, and it is too late for them to go into the market to find food. And Jesus then takes the barley loaves and the fish, he breaks hands them out, and there is more than everyone can eat. That story is found in all four gospel lessons. That story is found in the oldest of all paintings uh, that folks would do in, um, in secret hideaway places. They would uh, create stories of Jesus. They would uh, create them on the walls to be able to tell the story. And this is the most popular story, and that is of Jesus feeding the 5,000. So he goes from there, and he goes into solitude. He goes off to a quiet place to pray, and he sends his disciples out across the great lake, and he said, I will follow you later. And then, also in chapter 6, he walks on water to go get to them. And they take him, they go to the other side. The townspeople wake up in the morning and they're looking for this amazing miracle prophet uh, person who just fed them. And they can't find him anywhere. And they'd heard that his disciples set off. So they follow him. And that's where the curtain opens for our story today that they have followed him and they are looking for the bread, they're looking for the miracle that Jesus did while he was with them the day before. The other thing I should mention about today's lesson is that I wanted to include it because there is a part of it that if the only time you hear the Gospel of John is in church, you won't hear this particular part. Now, in August of 2021, we will hear uh, more of the story of Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. We're going to hear the beginning part. We're going to hear the ending part. Uh, but this middle part is not included. And I wanted to include it today for this phrase. That Jesus had said, I am the bread of life. Everyone whom the Father gives to me will come to me, and I won't send away anyone who comes to me. I won't send anyone away. This is a beautiful message, I think, for our day and time, that Jesus will take everyone who comes to him, and no one will be sent away because he is the bread of life. So I would like to put this into a little bit of context. And the context is this. It has to do with a place called Bimini Bay. 
And I don't know if any of you are familiar with Bimini Bay. Uh, the marshals are. We were on that bay yesterday on our boat. Uh, it is tucked conveniently and very nicely into Anna Maria Island. Uh, it is this bay that's on the inside. It faces out towards the east. And so it's a lovely bay for us to go fishing. It's always calm. There's always a nice breeze blowing. It is a wonderful place to hang out. And it is in this place that uh, a couple weeks ago, we were drying off Elijah's swim shirt and uh, a breeze, because there's always a good breeze, came and took the shirt and threw it into the bay. <laughs> and so there's his shirt floating out there. I immediately turned the boat around to go get it, but there's some kayakers. And the kayakers start waving me, oh, no, 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 we'll get it. And they start to kayak over, which means as a boater, I have to stop my boat because there's kayaks in front of me. And they're boating, but the wind is blowing and they're having a hard time getting to it. And the shirt is starting to take on water and starting to dip below. And uh, I, I almost said, but I didn't, I didn't. I wasn't wearing my collar, but still we wear it always anyway. And so I patiently waited and they're like, sorry, man, we couldn't. And then it disappeared under the water and Elijah no longer had his swim shirt. And then yesterday, and this is the most bizarre thing. Uh, so we were sitting out again, different part of the bay, but we were out in that, in that general area and we had the anchor in and it was a beautiful day. It was dry. It didn't have the humidity like it does today. It was an incredible day. And uh, so there's a nice breeze blowing out of the north. So we had the anchor in, and we got the lunch out. And as we were getting ready, we have two umbrellas. And these are the beach umbrellas that have uh, rainbow colors. So red, green, blue, yellow. It's really pretty. So we have two of them. And we put them in the fishing pole holders on the stern so that we have additional sun protection because the sun was coming in just underneath our bimini top. And so we put them in there. We've done this before. And we were having a nice lunch. I was getting something ready and someone had mentioned, and I forget who it was in the family, Christy pointed out, hey, where did that one umbrella go? The umbrella that was on the port side on the left side of the boat had disappeared. The one on the starboard side, on the right side, was still there, but the one behind her just was gone. And so we quickly looked in the water, nowhere. And Ethan thought I had put it away. I started to think I put it away too, and I started thinking I was losing my mind, but it was gone. Some wind slowly took the umbrella up, most of it tipped it over, and down with the fishes it went. The bay taketh away. <laughs> but the bay giveth. So uh, my favorite hat that I wear outside when I'm mowing the lawn or when I'm working on the boat or when I'm outside, my favorite hat, it's a big floppy hat and it has ventilation holes, has a chin strap. It's an awesome hat. And we found it in the bay. In fact, I think I was with Bob Erker when we found it. Uh, it was out there floating and I grabbed it and it's now my favorite hat. And so we lost a swim shirt, but I gained this awesome hat. And then the other day, I was bringing the boat around to have it ready for us on Saturday on Bimini Bay. And I'm out there, and my dad taught me, whenever you're out on a boat, if you see garbage in the water, you must go get it. And in a sailboat, it is harder to do that than with a powerboat. So um, I was powering along by myself, having a great time. I was on the north end of Anna Maria Island, and I saw what looked like a plastic bag floating in the water. So, um, motored around, got the hook, and I pulled it in. And what I pulled in was not a bag, but it was another sun hat. A big, big brim like this, and holding my hands up almost to my shoulders. It's almost like a sombrero. And it has a camouflage pattern to it that if a zebra decided to sign up for the special forces, this is what the zebra would look like. So it, we call it the zebra hat. And everybody in the family wants to wear the zebra hat. It's lightweight, it dries quickly. And so we lost an umbrella and we gained the zebra hat. The bay taketh and the bay giveth. So it was, it was wonderful. This whole story about Jesus centers around water and food. And so as we are having lunch and our umbrella disappears, 
as we are about to eat and we find a hat floating in the water. It's, it's this thing around water. And food was difficult to come by back in the first century, and it was a constant fear and concern. The other constant fear and concern was water and storms. It seemed as if there were two things they couldn't control, and it was food supply and the weather. And so when Jesus was there, he first showed them that he can break bread and feed a multitude of people. He then showed he has mastery over water. And so I imagine if Jesus was physically with me in the boat, and when Elijah's sun shirt went flying off, I would say, hey man, do you mind? And Jesus would just get out, sure, and walks over, bends down, picks up the, you know. He has mastery and power over water and over food. So imagine the first century, you have run into somebody who can do this. What is your first instinct? And I need to add one more thing in. There is a political dimension to this, that the land in which the people were living was occupied by a foreign government and foreign army. Uh, the, the Roman army and the Roman emperor had control and power over that area. And that's part of why they had difficulty with food, and that's a whole different story to tell you. Uh, but they were concerned about that. And so here comes Jesus, who can feed them. And the first thought in their mind was not spiritual, but political. Here is our Messiah. This is our military political leader. We will rally around him, and he will always give us food. And the reason why is that political leaders back then, or part of the arm of the state, if you will, was to feed its people. And so for those people who are fed by the government or the ruling authority, and suddenly he can break bread and feed thousands and thousands of people, that means that he must be the military and politi uh, political leader. But he wasn't. When he walked on water, something that no emperor, no government had ever been able to do. They really thought, this is our guy. And so with that, they flood out to see him, to see the next leader and the next ruler. And it's in that context that the crowd asked Jesus, what must we do in order to accomplish what God requires? You and I hear that as a spiritual question. We hear that as, um, this is a very spiritual man, only somebody from God can do this, and so what is it that God requires that we do? They asked it as a political question. Because God had given them this land through Moses. Moses had fed the, uh, them in the wilderness with the manna, the bread that came down from heaven. And Moses was both a political and a spiritual, but for them, mostly political leader. He rescued them out of slavery and brought them into the land of promise, the land that God had given Abraham, and then they were in it. And now the same ancestors, a long time later, were in the same land, but it wasn't theirs. It was owned and occupied by a foreign government. What must we do to accomplish what God requires? They're talking military. What must we do? What type of military power must we have to force the people out of this land? And Jesus said, this is what God requires, that you believe in him whom God sent. Believe is an action verb in Greek and in Aramaic, the language that Jesus most likely would have spoken. Greek is the language that it was written down in. It's an action verb, to believe. It's not just sitting back and say, well, I don't, I don't believe in higher taxes. No, no, it's not that. It's not what you think. It's what you're doing, that you believe, that you believe in him who God sent. The action verb that they were looking for was, I want you to go home and I want you to take your plows and I want you to turn them into spears and I want you to take your pruning hooks and I want you to turn them into swords because we're going to war. This is what God requires. 
is that you go and make yourself ready as an army to throw the Roman guard out. Jesus said that you believe. You believe in the one who sent him. So that undoubtedly had questions. They asked, what miraculous sign will you do that we can see and, then they use his word, believe in you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, just as is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said, I assure you, it wasn't Moses who gave the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Another way of putting that is Jesus was saying, I'm the manna. I'm the one that came down and gave people life while they were in the wilderness. Before they got to the promised land, I'm the one who was feeding them. And they said, sir, give us this bread all the time. They were thinking with their stomachs. They weren't thinking spiritually. And who can blame them? Every day they had to go out and work for food. Jesus knows this. God knows this. And I think it's perfectly fine that they are concerned about their stomachs and not their spiritual life. Give us this bread always. Make it so that we never have to toil again. Make it so that we don't have to work for our food again. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Again, he, Jesus is talking spiritual, and they're talking political and earthly stuff. And I think they start to understand it. But, uh, and then he said, everyone whom the Father gives to me will come to me. I won't send anyone away who comes to me. And this is my Father's will, that all who see the Son and believe in him will have eternal life. And I will raise them up at the last day. Jesus is saying that while you were toiling during the day to make your earthly food, I will be with you and supporting you and surrounding you because I am the bread of life. Another way to put that is I'm not the military leader that's coming here to overthrow. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to gather in all who came to me. Our news stories and our news feeds have shown us stories of people who have turned out to receive medical attention or tests and have been turned away. We hear stories of people even yesterday going to the beach and being turned away, that there is no parking. Jesus is saying, I will not turn anyone away. And that while we are toiling along with our daily life, and while we have concerns about our stomachs, another way to think of that is concerns about uh, the world in general, our uh, economies, the way that we are concerned about uh, potential meat shortages. We're concerned about things with our stomach, and we should be. These are unprecedented and scary, scary times. And in the midst of all of that, Jesus is standing amongst us and inside of us, telling us not to be afraid. I am the bread of life. I am the good things of this world. You will have every, so you wake up tomorrow, you'll be hungry again, you have to eat. You'll wake up tomorrow, you'll be thirsty again, you'll have to drink. But I am the bread of life. I am the spiritual side of life, the one that will raise you up on the last day, that promised land, that place far away. I am the one who will do that, says Jesus. And so it's no wonder that the earliest images that the first or the early church was writing was of Jesus breaking bread and sharing it. The first images we have is of Jesus walking on water, of Jesus doing those things 
out of God's love and not out of uh, political or military power, but as a sign and a place to believe. And so he's calling on you and I today to believe. Yes, it's a scary time. Yes, it is uncertain, but there are things that we must believe. And believing in the power of his message, I will raise you up. And if all the men and women who have died from this pandemic, of all the men and women who have died from the flu, from all the men and women who have died this entire year, Jesus said, I will not, I will not turn away anyone who comes to me. So believe, believe, because I am the bread of life. turning in your bulletin to page 4 and your Book of Common Prayer to page 96. I invite you to say the words of our faith found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, Keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. On this Mother's Day, we give thanks to God for the divine gift of motherhood. Let us pray for all the mothers among us today for our own mothers, those living and those who have passed away, for the mothers who loved us and for those who fell short of loving us fully, for all who hope to be mothers someday and for those whose hopes to have children have been frustrated for all mothers who have lost children, for all women and men who have mothered others in any way, those who have been our substitute mothers, and we who have, a, have mothered others in need. We pray this all in the name of God. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our lives, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, do not be afraid. I am the bread of life. Anyone who comes to me, I won't send away. I will lift them up. We pray for those who are sick, those who suffer. We pray for all who protect us both here and abroad, and for those whose, and for those on our prayer list, especially Downs the Fourth, Holden, Ruth, Timothy, Lynn, Don, Bill, Dorothy Joe, Valerie, Sue, Elizabeth, Georgia, Kay, Vicki, Ed, Jim, 
Barbara, Ward, Krista, John, Cynthia, Linda, Andres, Jonathan, Ginny, Marianne, Ed, Carling, Sophia, Victoria, Caroline, Lorraine, and Oliver. We pray for John Maxheim, who will be having surgery for tongue cancer on Tuesday. We pray for Jonathan Detweiler, who was placed in hospital hospice on Friday. May grant God him peace and rest, and may the Holy Spirit comfort Gloria and his family. And we pray in thanksgiving that Alex's back surgery was successful and that he is now off pain narcotics and doing much better. We pray that the Holy Spirit comfort those who cannot visit their loved ones and for those who cannot be visited. And we pray for the wisdom and love of the Holy Spirit to send upon those who care for those who are sick. We pray for those we name now, either silently or aloud. Pray for Eleanor. Pray for we pray for those who have died and for those who mourn, especially those we name now. Bring us the living bread that is broken and shared for the world. Lord God, help us find peace in you. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour on your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are going to do today a prayer for spiritual communion. And if it is your desire to receive the benefits of communion for those who cannot receive, I invite you to pray along with me that which is printed in your bulletin on page five. So together, let us pray. O oh God, I am sorry, sorry that I have I've sinned, sinned against, against you for all the wrongs I have done and for the good I have not done. done. Especially, Especially I, confess I confess these, these things, things now. Forgive me, Forgive me for, for Jesus' sake, sake and grant me the strength and, and wisdom, wisdom to amend, amend my life. life. Amen. Amen. Blessed Jesus. In, in union with the faithful, faithful gathered, gathered around, around the world today, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And particularly, for the, for the blessings, blessings given, given me 
that but I, I name now. now. I believe that you are present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot receive communion at this time, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you in the power of your gracious might. Rule over, over every, every hostile, hostile power that, that threatens or disturbs the growth, the growth of, of your kingdom in me, in my, in my family, and in my, in my community. Let me serve you in this life until, until by, by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Amen. Come, come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus and dwell in my heart. Be my wisdom and guide me along the right pathways, pathways and conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep my heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, my Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with me now and always. Amen. Turning in your prayer books to page 102, page 6 in our bulletin. Together, let us pray our concluding prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen.
And now for greetings and announcements. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Dale. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Maggie, for your prayers. And thank you, Christy, for being my wife and for reading and being such a great mom. Uh, and happy Mother's Day and for reading the psalm. Thank you, Ginger, for reading and Ethan and Elijah. Thank you for uh, running the camera. Uh, and Scott, who is our Zoom host at home, and to both uh, Barbara and Debbie, who are outside with everyone who has gathered to hear us in cars. So welcome and thank you. Uh, a couple quick announcements. The need for food is real, and Jesus is the bread of life, and he calls us to feed others in his name. So we have a yellow barrel waiting out in front of the church next to the angel uh, statue. So you are invited to bring food, and that goes directly to the Manatee Food Bank. And I have uh, recently discovered what the difference is between a food bank and a food pantry. Uh, a food bank is what collects the food, and they send it to the pantries, and the pantries are the one who administer the food. And so by giving directly to Manatee County Food Bank, they then can sort and send it exactly to where it needs to go. Uh, so thank you for everyone who is contributing and continuing to give food. Uh, the barrel is out 24 hours a day, as is our angel and our fountain for prayers. Um, also, next to it is something that is kind of fun, and that is a take a puzzle, leave a puzzle. And the marshals are leaving uh, a puzzle, a thousand piece called Wild Jungle. This comes with a great warning to it. It is not easy. So uh, if you're interested, it is a wonderful puzzle. And the shapes, as Ethan was telling me, each shape is different. Is that what you're saying? Or the shapes are varied? Yeah. Yeah. OK, they're varied. So it's not like puzzles where it's always the same shape. So this puzzle's out there, as well as at least nine other puzzles are waiting. And they're coming and going, which is wonderful. So uh, you're welcome to stop by and to take a puzzle or leave a puzzle. Uh, if you happen to be in North Carolina or Virginia or Nova Scotia or North Idaho or Southern California, it is too hard for you to get here to, try to but make a puzzle on your own and share with others. Uh, so we have our uh, men's discussion group, which is on Tuesday at 10 a.m. on our Zoom meeting. We have uh, our Revelation class, which is uh, on Wednesday at 10 a.m. And we have recorded last week's uh, and have not sent it out yet. Um, so on the Tuesday tidings, look for the link that Maria will send you, and then you can uh, watch la the class that we had last time. If you haven't watched any class on the book of Revelation, I would recommend this. Uh, this is where we're really getting down to uh, the nitty gritty of what's happening. And the question that uh, is being asked by all apocalyptic writers is, uh, where is God's justice? Where is God in suffering? Why do righteous people have to suffer? And why do the wicked never seem to get, never seem to get it? Uh, and so apocalyptic an uh, answers all four of those questions. Uh, and you will start seeing them being answered in uh, chapter seven and eight that we're covering. So, uh, and then on uh, Thursday, we have our women's discussion group. And that is at 9 a.m. And all of those links are being emailed out. If you do not uh, or are not a part of our email, um, our weekly, which is actually turning out, we send out three a week now. Is that what's happening? Three or four? Anyway, we send out a bunch of emails. So uh, if you'd like to be on that, go onto our website and you will see how to get on there or email me directly, uh, Dave at all angels, L B K, as in longboat key, dot org. So email me and I'll get you on the list. So, a uh, couple other things. I received a text from uh, Gloria Detweiler during the service. So, welcome to the 21st century, right? This is pretty cool that she can send a message while I am in. And the message she sent is that uh, Jonathan had a very rough night, but um, both spiritual angels and his physical angels, which are the nurses at Tidewell Hospital, are caring and comforting him, uh, and that our prayers are to be directed for him and my own personal prayers, and I'm inviting you to pray uh, for Gloria as well. Uh, this is not an easy time for her. And as family flies in there, we don't know if they'll be able to see Jonathan. I know that I'm not, uh, and that Hospice uh, Tidewell is keeping uh, everybody else out. So um, also, uh, my daily prayers are for John Maxheim, who uh, had to go into the hospital to receive a feeding tube because he has to get his strength up 
for Tuesday's surgery. So um, also pray for uh, Eleanor and for any of you that have cared for somebody who is ill. Um, these are not easy times on her either. So uh, I invite you to pray for um, both of them as well. So uh, the rest of our names are on your prayer list and I invite you to keep praying and we will get through this together. And uh, on the bishop, uh, we... Uh, every two weeks, the diocesan clergy get onto a meeting with the bishop through Zoom. And we've never done this before. We've never had this type of communication in this diocese before, face-to-face, uh, -face, at least online. And, uh, and there are wonderful meetings. And the bishop told me this, and I want to pass this on to you. And what he said was, and this is to his clergy, uh, brothers and sisters, pray. Pray for five minutes. If you feel as if you can't pray for five minutes, Pray for one minute. If you're feeling worn out and scared and tired, pray for just 30 seconds. And my brothers and sisters, if you can't pray for 30 seconds, know that somebody else is. I say that to you. Pray, and if you feel you can't, know that we are surrounded by saints on heaven, uh, saints on earth who are praying on your behalf. So with all of that, um, I invite your feedback. We have changed a couple things for this Sunday, so feel free to email me. Email me. And um, once again, for Mother's Day, there are no, did you know this? There are no hymns for Mother's Day. And for those who like to write hymns, Come on, right? How long have we had Mother's Day? I, even hymns in Spanish, right? I mean, you'd think that there would be some Mother's Day hymns. So it's every year, at least the last two years that Dale and I have been together, uh, we always scratch our heads and go, what should we sing for Mother's Day? And so we decided uh, that it would be best for all the saints. Uh, we all have mothers and we all have cared for others. So um, I invite you to turn in your bulletin to page six, and if you happen to have a blue hymnal, it's on page 287, and we're singing three of the verses. So I invite us to sing together uh, for all the saints. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. 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 Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.